What's up, Tech Heart? Dude, tonight we're going to dive into the coolest Hyperlin setup you've seen in a little while. Omar Key. Man, it's by DHH, the Ruby on Rails developer, and it's the coolest way to install Hyperlind on Arch Linux without any setup. We're going to theme it, and it's going to be good. Are you all ready? Remember, if you like this playlist, please hit the like button. It's right down there, maybe on the left or the right. Click it, man. Subscribe, and check out TechHeart because we've got a lot to offer. Let's dive into Omarki, a cool Hyperlin theme by DHH, the Ruby on Rails developer, and it's really cool for anyone wanting to dive into Hyperlin without having to set it all up for yourself. This is easy sauce. Let's go! Okay, TechHeart, let's get logged in. This is our vanilla Arch Linux installation, like always, and I'll set the font to something bigger so it's easier for y'all to see. Okay, before we start installing, let's jump over to our web browser and learn about Omarki. David Heinmeier Hansen is the creator of Ruby on Rails, the programming language. He's a really cool guy and he does a lot for the tech space, not only including running the Ruby on Rails team. A few months ago, DHH got into Linux and he made an Ubuntu setup called Omicube. And you can learn about that at omicube.org. And it was really nice, but it was just using Ubuntu. However, he now found out about Hyperland and he created Omarki. And it's really, really nice, guys. So we're going to install Omarki tonight. And all we need is this one command right here. So let's jump back on over to our vanilla Arch Linux machine. And as always, since we use Peru, we'll do a full system update with Peru. Okay, we'll say yes and let that go. Okay, with that done, I'll clear the screen. And we're ready to do our Omarki installation command. This is a script and it's going to download all of the Omarki stuff, Hyperlind, and all of DHH's edits. So let's get that wgit command entered. First, let's make sure we have wgit. Nope. So we'll do a peru s on wgit, and we'll just install that quickly. Boom, Bob's your uncle. And now we can do a wgit dash q capital O dash https on omarki.org slash install, and we're gonna pipe that into bash. Now, on previous install attempts, I've had this script fail, but what worked for me is just to re-enter the command until it works completely. But maybe we'll get lucky and it'll install perfectly on the first press. Let's run the script, guys. Boom! Oh yeah, Omarki's going in there. So this is going to pull down all of DHH's Hyperlind theming options, packages, software, and he's done a lot. We'll go through that at the end. This is a really complete Hyperlind theme, and I like it. It's one of the best that I've found, and I think it's something great to build off of, or if you don't want to mess with Hyperlin, you just want something really nice, this is it for you. Whoa, look at that, baby. Oh, Marky. Enter full name. I think this is for Git, so I'll enter tech heart, and for email, I'm going to do techheart at gmail.com. That'll continue installing stuff, and same thing that I saw before. Since I'm on a capture card, I have to advance the screen, but Omarki installation failed. It says you can retry by running bash tilde .local share omarki install.sh. So I'll clear the screen, and as that installation told me, I'm gonna run bash on tilde.local share omarki install.sh. In my previous attempts, I kept running this until Omarki fully installs. So let's give it a shot. Okay, we're off to the races again. We'll enter our git information. I don't know why this failed for me, but it has done so more than once on this ThinkPad or our Arch Linux vanilla installation. But at any rate, you can see here, it's getting farther than it did before. It's pulling down all of the different packages and softwares that DHH uses in the Omarki theme. So let's hope it finishes this time. In my last attempts, I think it took three times. Let's see.
I'll advance the screen and you'll see again Omarki installation failed. Okay, so this time it's failing all the way right at Plymouth. Plymouth and Plymouth Git are in conflict. Ooh, I see what's happening. It says Plymouth 24 and Plymouth Git are in conflict. Remove Plymouth Git. On our vanilla Arch Linux installation, we had Plymouth Git installed. So we'll do a peru-r on Plymouth-git. And for our system, we'll see that we need Plymouth-theme-optimist-git. So what we're gonna do is a Peru dash R on that theme, Plymouth dash theme dash Optimus dash Git. We're gonna remove that. Okay, that's fine. And now we'll do a Peru dash R on Plymouth dash Git. Okay, but now we need to reinstall Plymouth. So we'll do Peru dash S on the regular Plymouth, which the Omarki script wants. Let's get that installed. Okay, now we can clear the screen and we can run that command again that the Omarki script told us to retry. So now let's see if it finishes. Install Omarki, baby! Every stinking time, we gotta enter our git information. And now, hopefully it'll get a little farther. Oh yeah! We're looking good. It seems like it's going through. If you noticed, this Omarki script installs a ton of software. Let's let it finish up, and hopefully this will be successful. Well, goodness gracious, it failed again. What do we have here? Problem with IPv6, uh, UFW. I don't see what the problem would be. We're gonna clear, we're gonna try again. So a lot of this has to do with what we had installed on our stock vanilla Arch Linux. Let's see if we get any farther. Yeah, it looks like it's getting farther. So if you were on a very base Arch Linux installation without those extra packages that we installed, this script would have worked perfectly. But this is for the love of Linux, man. Are you a tinkerer? If so, you're at the right place. We're gonna get this sucker installed. We're getting down to the fonts, man. I think this is gonna go through now. Guys, we're almost there. Default applications, let's go! So DHH is installing LibreOffice and, and basically everything that we need. I saw LazyVim back there, I saw Docker stuff. We're gonna have to dig in. This is a complete Hyperlind setup. It went through five different sections. Wait till you see all the customizations because this is a cool Hyperlind environment, baby! It's even installing Zoom. One password. Omarki, oh, five of five system packages. Let's go! Ooh, it looks like it's installing the chaotic AUR. That's interesting. This is gonna be all of DHH's workflow. And I think, guys, we're there! We'll be rebooting now, and since I'm on a capture card, I'll be back when I have screen mirroring set up. Let's go! Ho oh, ho ho! This should take us right into Omarki. And look at that, it has a cool Lux unlock screen. That's nice. And yeah, baby, here we are. So I know that Windows Enter opens up a terminal. We can open up many. We can click on the date up here and change it to longer. It has this neat little animation. It only shows one, two, three, four, five icons here. And if we want to see the other icons, that opens it up. I'll go ahead and connect.
This is looking really nice. What I think we'll do right now is let's take about five minutes and listen to DHH describe Omarki so we can learn about all of its features. And as you can see here, um, there are no icons. There's no dock. There's nothing to click on. You drive everything through the keyboard. So the first thing we can do is hit Super B. That starts a new browser. And then I can hit Super Enter, and I get a new terminal right next to it. And that's really how you start applications. We can start one more here. If I hit app or Super T, I'm going to start um, B top down below. If I hit Super W, I close it again. If I hit a Super Shift Arrow, I can swap the positions of these. And if I hit uh, Super J, I um, change it from horizontal to vertical uh, alignment here. If I bring this top back, you can also see that I can pop windows from one workspace, we're in workspace number one here, to another workspace, and it'll retile that workspace. So if I hit Super Shift 2, boom, it jumped over on workspace 2, where I already had another terminal, and I can jump right back, Super Shift uh, 1, and I'll go back to workspace number one. I'll close this back down again. I can close this one. And as you can see, you're not resizing anything. The windows will just automatically fill the screen as they see fit. But you don't actually have to do it like that. Let's imagine you just have one uh, browser, for example, on a single workspace, and you don't want it that wide. You can hit Super P, and then you get to resize it by holding down Super and the right arrow button. And look how nice that is. It is just centering it. So if I'm reading something and I have this alone on my uh, workspace, I can just narrow it down like that. If I hit Super P again, it'll go back to the tiling mode. And here I am with, uh, with everything. Now, those are just some of the applications. There are a bunch bound by default. And some of the ones I really like is the fact that you can bind web apps with the same level of fidelity and feel as you would bind any other application. For example, on Super A, I have ChatGPT. So I can just pop it up and ask, uh, what is Omachi? And while it's figuring that out, um, I can hop up here and do some other work, do whatever. I can start my filing manager, for example. That's Nautilus. Um, and see all my files here. You can actually also hold down super and then left arrow button and drag the, um, the window around if you want to scale it differently here. Um, and again, we can use that super J to get a different uh, layout of it. If, for example, I want um, this in the middle, I'll hold down super and the right arrow, and I can readjust everything down here. Um, pretty cool. Now, what's funny about Omachi is that it's built on top of Arch, which basically ships with nothing in the box. And I have jammed everything into the box, everything that I need on a regular basis to do my work. So let's shut this one down. And then, for example, I have Super M. I have my music here from Spotify. Um, I have uh, NeoVim on Super N. I have uh, my Signal on Super G. I have even X on Super X. But let's close all this up again and see another neat feature of Omachi that I've built in. So if you hold down uh, Super Control Shift Space, Boom, you're going to pop to a different theme is Capuchine. Um, jump to another theme, Everforest. Let's actually have a look at um, this while we do it, because you see that the terminal, which is Alacrity, will change its view and layout along with the themes as we jump through these themes. There are uh, six of them in all. Uh, none of them are light themed right now. They're all uh, dark themed, but they extend their theming across uh, a bunch of different applications. The default editor that I use here is NeoVim which I think is an awesome editor. You can, of course, install whatever you like. But if we hop in and have a look at the config here, I have NeoVim and just N and then dot to jump into the um, current directory. We can see here is the config for Hyperland that's set up. These are some of the extra bindings for especially web apps that I've set up. You can just change these to something else. I run Dropbox. Um, on this setup as well. And here are all the defaults. You can have a look at these defaults. You can, of course, override them with whatever you like, and you can see what the default applications are set to. But now that I mentioned Dropbox, let's have a quick look at the menu bar up here. So this bar up here is run by something called Waybar. It has the uh, workspaces. It has the time of day. And you can actually click on that to see the date, click back to go back on time. And then over here, it has all those control services that are running. I have my Dropbox just giving me an update if anything's updating. I have my uh, Bluetooth. I have my Ethernet that shows uh, upload and download speeds. And then I have uh, my volume, which, by the way, if you hover over that and you use the scroll wheel on your, uh, on your you can turn it up and down. And if you right click on it, you can mute it. Right click again to unmute it. And then we have um, the CPU usage, which actually, if you just click on that, it'll be top as we were just running before. And then finally, here, I also have the performance profile. You can click on that to cycle between the different profiles. This is a desktop, it doesn't really matter so much, but on a laptop, it's quite nice. So let's hop out of all of this. Now, I've shown you a bunch of ways to start these different applications just using the keyboard. But you can, of course, also start things through the launcher. Hold down Super and then press Space, and you will see this nicely themed launcher that will show all the applications that are installed on the system by default that I've installed. As you can see here, if we actually go from the top, um, we have the About page just showing fast fetch on what this kind of machine is. This is on my Intel box. But if we hop back here, I have one password set up. It's a wonderful password manager. And with the latest version that basically is still in beta, but I've baked into it, it works finally properly with Wayland and all the copy and pasting, uh, none of those issues. There were actually a bunch of those issues. I needed Chrome uh, 138 to come out because there's some issues there too. I think a little bit bleeding edge. That is a little bit how it is on, on Arch, but I finally managed to nail it all down into a cohesive package that just works. Okay, um, Rockstars, so here we are back in Omarky, and I've looked at a few things. 
If you go into your home slash dot config slash hyper directory, you'll see your hyperlin.conf and your monitors.conf. That's where you can set up your monitors and your basic hyperlin configuration. And then DHH stores other settings in home slash dot local slash share slash omarkey slash default slash hyper. And then there's other comp files and a directory called bindings. And that's where you can find all of your key binds. So if we do a vim on home.local share omarkey default hyper bindings, and then let's just do tiling. I think that's like most of the basic stuff. Here's all of your key binds that you can change. Uh, he does a super and F10, or maybe it's one to go to workspace one. Let's see there, super two. Yeah, so super one, two, three, four, etc. Now we can go to the Hyperland documentation and also turn on gestures. So if you have a touchpad, you can move workspaces left and right that way. But this is his setup. And um, I think it was super W is to kill a window, but you can change all of this stuff to what you like. So this is the Omarki Hyperland theme. It's really kick arse. And you saw DHH explain to us how we can do all of the things that he's baked in. But let me know down in the comments below, how are you gonna jump off of this setup and make it your own? This is one of the best Hyperland themes I've ever seen. Maybe TechHeart will do another video and modify the head out of it. Until next time, baby, TechHeart out.